Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. One of my neighbours has given me these old homemade car ramps, and I think they'll provide most of the materials for a nice welding table. I've also bought these four old fence posts from the scrapyard to make the table legs. First up I'll unload the ramps and take them out the back so we can get started. These ramps each weigh about 50 kilograms or 110 pounds, so I need to be careful. I'll use these steel trestles to support the ramps while we disassemble them. The welds are fairly easy to cut through using a thin angle grinder disc. You don't have to cut all the way through the welds, you can break the remaining weld metal by bending it back and forth with a lever like this. Now I'll cut and break off the legs in the same way. We used a thin cutting disc to cut through the welds, but now we'll need to use a thick grinding disc to remove those remaining blobs of weld metal. This is a slow process, so I'll only show the first one. When you use recycled materials for projects like this, you're usually trading your saving in money for all the extra time you need to prepare the materials. Now I'll move those trestles to give you a change of scenery for the assembly process. This smooth surface is going to become the top of the table, so I'll put it to the bottom. Now I'll grind the edges off the plate. This gives a shiny surface for the weld to stick to. Stick welding doesn't need a perfectly clean surface for the weld, but having a shiny metal surface really helps make a good connection. I'm going to use the angle sections that we've removed before to make a border around this plate. I'll use some pieces of wood and these big washers to hold them at the correct angle while I clamp them. I'm putting the angles this way up to increase the stiffness of the top plate. They were used for the same purpose on the car ramps. The plate's textured upper surface leaves a small gap between it and the angle section. This is actually a good thing because it will give our welds better penetration. Now I'll attach the ground clamp and weld the corner of the angle to the plate. I'm going to attach these pieces together with short 25mm or 1 inch long welds. Once it cools, use your chipping hammer to tap off the slag. I used five welds across the length of that first angle section. They're not pretty, but they'll get the job done. I'll need to use two angle sections to cover the long sides of the plate, and this joint will also need to be welded. Now I'll use a combination square to mark a mitre joint on the corner. Then I'll cut it off with my bigger angle grinder. Once we've worked our way around the table, we can fit, clamp and weld the final piece. One nice thing about working in metal is that if your mitre joints aren't perfect, you can always hide your shame behind some extra welding. Now that we've finished the bench top, we can start on the legs. I'm making the bench the same height as the trestles, 810mm or about 32 inches. If you're cutting steel pipe with an angle grinder, a couple of wooden blocks like these can make the job easier. I'll use this piece of cardboard to mark around the pipe. These arrows are reminding me to mark along the straight edge. Simply wrap your cardboard around the pipe so that its edges line up, then mark around the pipe with a pencil. Now we can rotate the pipe as we cut along the line until we reach the end of the cut. Once all the legs have been cut, we can stand them up and tack weld them in position. I like to do a quick squareness check before making that second tack weld. Next, I'll measure and cut a piece of small diameter pipe, then flatten its ends using a makeshift anvil and sledgehammer. You need to flatten both ends so that those two flat surfaces are aligned with each other. Now we can tack weld the brace in position. I didn't have a long enough piece of thin pipe for the long brace, so I needed to join two pieces together. I cut this pipe and flattened its ends the same way as we did for the short brace. Then I tack welded it in place. Once everything's tack welded together, we'll perform one last check for squareness, then seam weld all the joints together. The next step is to carefully lift the bench down off those trestles. Then we can weld on the feet. Because it has a fairly thin top plate, this is only a light duty welding bench, but it's still strong enough to hold up my 120 kilos, or 260 pounds, without any bending. 
It's now a few days later, and I've had to move the bench out of the rain. Now we need to remove that rust from the bench top. Normally I'd use a wire brush like this on the angle grinder, but for this thick, hard rust, I'll do a pass over the whole surface with the angle grinder first. After a very noisy hour's work, most of that rust was gone. Then I finished the job with a sander. Next we can put a drop cloth under the bench and paint the legs. This paint says it can be applied directly onto rust. I guess we'll find out in a few years if that's true or not. That looks pretty good, but how can I make it stand out from all the other Make a Welding Bench videos? All done. This has been a fun project, and you'll see this bench in use in a lot of my future videos. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.